Hello, my name is Kevin Stamp from PS Motion. PS Motion are making a series of videos that describe how to use Mech Designer to design the basic elements of a machine. This is part one. In this first tutorial, we will build a motion driven model of a simple mechanism to show how quickly you can use Mech Designer to model real mechanisms. The first thing you see when you start Mech Designer is the view of the model. It has the model name tab. Clearly, there is nothing to be seen before we build a model. You can do two actions in the model name tab. You can add mechanisms and add planes. It so happens mechanisms in packaging machines can most often be represented on a plane. That is, their parts can be flattened onto a plane and still give an exact representation of the kinematics. We can also create spatial mechanisms when they are needed, and we will show you how to model those in later videos, but for this video we will stick to a plane. So, to begin modeling of our first mechanism, we must select a plane and add to it a new mechanism editor. We select the Add Mechanism icon in the Model toolbar, and then click a plane. In the graphic area here, or the assembly tree here. We then click OK in the command manager, or right click to complete the add mechanism command. When we do this, we add a new name tab with the name mechanism. This tab shows the frame or base part of the new mechanism. We will need to add the basic kinematic elements, parts and joints, in the Mechanism Editor to design the new mechanism, which in this case will be a crank slider. Before we add the parts, we need to edit the base part to locate where in the frame we want to join the crank slider. If we double click the rectangular part outline of the base part, we will be able to add sketch elements, for example lines and circles, with the part editor. First, notice the Mechanism Name tab has now changed to a Part Name tab, with the name of the part, which in this case is the base part. Remember that the base part is the frame of the mechanism, and usually the machine frame. We need to add lines and points to define where we want to locate the joints between the crank and the slider and the frame. To add a line, we must first select the Add Line icon from the Geometry toolbar. Then, to add the line, we must mouse button down, drag, and mouse button up. We will generally call this action drag. We add a horizontal constraint using this tool in the Constraints toolbar. Then, add dimensions in the usual way. We use the Smart Dimension tool in the Geometry toolbar to add dimensions and locate the line. When we have done that, we need to exit the part editor to return to the mechanism editor. We select this icon to exit the part editor. Again, notice that when we do that, the name tab changes to the mechanism name tab. Now we can add some parts and join them together with simple joints to design the crank slider mechanism. To add each part, we click the Add Part icon from the Kinematic Elements toolbar. To add the part, we drag in the same way as when we added the line, which is, we mouse button down, move our mouse, and mouse button up. This part will be the crank. We add an, another part for the slider and a third part which will be the connecting rod between the crank and the slider. 
Then we can add the joints. We will need pin joints and a slide joint. To add a pin joint between the crank and the frame, we select the Add Pin Joint icon and click these points. One point at the origin of the crank part and another point at the end of the line that is in the frame. To add a slide joint between the slider and the frame, we select the slide joint icon and click these two lines one line along the center of the slider part and another and another line in the frame or what we call the base part notice that we need a line in two different parts when we add a slide joint and a point in each part for a pin joint finally we need to join the connecting rod to the crank and to the slider which is two more pin joints Again, we select the pin joint command and select a point in each part. One pin joint is with the crank and the other pin joint is with the slider. So now we need to define how we want to move the mechanism. This works by driving a joint with a defined motion. We can choose to drive the crank or the slider. In this case, we will define the motion of the crank around the pin joint, which is the crankshaft relative to the line in the base part. To do this, we select the add motion dimension function block from the kinematic function blocks toolbar. We need to select three elements. We select the pin joint, and then the line in the base part first followed by the line along the center of the crank part when we click OK or right click we will see the motion dimension function block and the dimension that indicates the angle between the line in the frame and the line in the crank part now we will add a linear motion function block from the kinematic function blocks toolbar. We click the icon in the toolbar and then click the graphic area. This is just a machine clock we use to generate steadily increasing angle values that increase from 0 to 360 to input to the motion dimension function block. We must connect the function blocks with wires and we drag a wire from the output connector to an input connector of the function blocks. Now we are ready to go. We can step through the cycle, drag the mechanism through the cycle with the master machine angle slider, slider or just click the continuously cycle button in the run toolbar. So I have shown you the very first step in learning how to use Mech Designer Professional for machine design. In the next video we will add a cam and output the data to SolidWorks and generate a solid cam model. Thank you. See you next time.